Let's hit play. All right, can you still hear me? We yes. can. Great. I'm going to talk about using branches, finally. <laughs> um, the thing that branches are good for, the, the secret power that they give Git, is separation of concerns. There's lots of places where you actually want to separate your concerns, and branches gives you that power in so many different instances. Um, and that is what I'm going to talk about. So why am I going to tell you about branches? Because they help you get your work done faster and easier and because they help you collaborate. And what I want you to come away with is a desire to use branches and enough knowledge to uh, get something out of them. So the most important things I can teach you are that branching is useful and it's quick and easy. It lets you handle multiple problems at once. Uh, sharing branches lets you collaborate with other people. That you should commit often. Committing is the win. Committing is the thing that makes your code be safe. You should always commit before merging, rebasing, or switching branches, unless you're explicitly trying to take your changes with you to a new branch. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Another thing I'm going to teach you is that merge puts your commits onto a target branch. And rebase moves your branch from one place to another, but it's still just a branch. You need to merge to get your commits onto the target branch. And the branching, merging, and rebasing all work together. So how can branches make you happy? Well, if you have some commits you want to push, but you have others that are not ready, this is in a situation where you've got a maybe a central repo or a shared repo, and you push and pull with it. Um, or you had to stash all your changes to work on an emergency fix. You were working on some feature, it's not ready, you've got bugs that you have to fix, and now you had to get rid of all that those changes that weren't ready yet so that you had space to do the bug fix. Or you have changes you can't put out of the main branch, but you want to save, maybe for a long time. Or you have lots of small commits, which is a really good thing, but you just want one big fat commit. Um, that encompasses all of those small commits. Or you want to try an experiment. Or you want to see if your changes were the ones that introduced the bug. But there are major pitfalls, too. Um, conflicts arise all when merging and when rebasing. And when switching between branches, your loose, uncommitted changes will try to come with you, which is normally a good thing, because usually you started making changes before you realized you wanted to be on a branch then you made your branch and your changes came with you and that's exactly what you wanted but sometimes you don't want that sometimes you're trying to get to a different branch and leave your changes behind you need to commit those before you leave the branch and the other thing that can get in the way is that rebasing commits upon which other people have based their work is perhaps the biggest dick move you can possibly make <laughs> It totally ruins people's existing branches, what they have on their own local repos, and makes it impossible for their work to uh, be merged correctly. So once you're sharing a branch with other people and they don't expect you to rebase it, you must never rebase it. So even if you don't grasp the details yet, I want you to know what's possible so you know where to look for more answers, what to Google, um, who to ask, what kinds of questions you need to think of in your mind. The things that we're going to cover are branching, rebasing, merging, and collaboration and workflows. But there's a couple things that we need to talk about before we start. Um, first, there's some important terminology. The tip of the branch and the branch name itself refer to the newest commit on the branch. And everything is a branch. Main is a branch. Master is a branch. Inside Git, a branch is simply a pointer to that commit. We're going to look at that. Head, which you've probably seen and heard of before, is the commit you have checked out right now. It usually points to the tip of a branch. Um, so it is a pointer to a pointer in a way. And we're going to look at that too. And 
they usually refer to the same commit. But when you check out a specific committer tag, you're no longer at the tip of a branch and head is detached from any branch. Uh, the git that I am using in these demos is 2.30.1. You should be using at least 2.23.0 so that you have git switch. You should already know roughly at least how to use git log. And there's a specific version of git log that I like to use a lot, which is git log minus minus one line, minus minus a brief commit, minus minus decorate. The minus minus decorate is the key for showing head and the branch tips and tags and all the other things that are sitting in your sitting in your in your log. Um, I use this version of log so often that I have an alias to it for uh, in git. I just I just say git l or git l8 to see the last eight commits uh, in this shape of the log. And you'll see that I don't use master anymore. In all my repos, I use main instead of master. And the way to get git to make main for you instead of master when you init a new repo is to set this config variable init.default branch to main. So branching. What is a branch? Well, as I mentioned before, inside Git, a branch is just a pointer to a commit. And a branch head, that pointer, moves forward whenever you add new commits. As you add a commit to the tip of a branch, the tip of the branch follows you and steps with each commit that you add. So you grow a branch with new commits and the head follows along. Uh, I hope that makes sense. With respect to your work though, a branch is just a separate line of de development that doesn't interfere with anything else. So you can have three different branches, one for a feature that you're working on, uh, another one for a bug that you're fixing, and another one for a bug that you just tried to fix and haven't successfully fixed yet. For instance, you can have as many branches as you want. You're always going to have at least one. One is the main branch. Every separate line of development is a branch even if you only have that one branch, uh, your primary branch. And once a branch has commits on it, it looks like the branch of a tree coming off a trunk or off some other branch. Uh, this happens whenever a commit has more than one child. So now I'm gonna do a little live demo to show you exactly how branches work inside Git. I am going to We decided this was big enough and you can see everything. Looks good to me. Uh, so I'm going to make a new repo. It's called entirely local repo. I'm going to add a commit to it. Um, We're going to look at the log. Here you can see the full hash of the commit. And in my prompt, just the first few characters of that, of that uh, hash. Mm. And you see what branch I'm on. I'm on the branch main. This is roughly what you get if you install the git bash prompt, which comes with git. Um, some environments give you this automatically. If you're on a Windows box and you install Git Bash for Windows, you'll automatically have a prompt that's something like this. Uh, anyway, inside the .git directory, you can see I have right here .git. I'm going to cd into .git. I have several things. One of them is a file called head. That is the magical head that we're always talking about when we say head back to or uh, get checkout head or any of those things that mention the word head. This is the head they mean. And if I look inside that file, 
All it says is that it points to ref's head's main. And you can see I have a ref directory right there. So if we CD into ref's heads and see what's there, there's a file called main. It's just a regular file, and I'm going to cat it. And you can see it has a hash in it, and that hash exactly matches the commit I'm on right now, the tip of main. And that is how we know what the tip of main is. Uh, this pointer stored in this file inside ref heads, inside your .git directory. That's all there is to it. Let's actually go back to the top and make another commit. Now, I'm going to say git l, that's my alias. I can show you that alias. It is log minus minus decorate minus minus a brief commit minus minus one line. And you can see I have two commits now. 2d6, the one we looked at before, and this brand new one, 736, with a bunch of stuff on it. And you can see that's where I am right now. That's the tip of my the tip of my uh, of the branch I'm currently on and I'm still on main main is the branch I am on and if I go into the dot git directory and cat head head is the same it still says rest head main because I'm still on main but if I cat that's head main now it has this new commit ID in it, the commit ID of the second commit that I put in my in my repo. And that is how we know where the tip of main is, because this file, refs head main, contains that commit ID. That's the only thing that makes main be this commit, is this file. You can actually, if you had to, make main point to someplace totally different by putting a totally different number into ref's heads main. You wouldn't want to do it that way, but you could. All right, back to the repo. There's different ways to make a new branch. Um, the way I like to use is git switch minus C. Minus C means create, and you give it a new branch name. Uh, you can optionally supply a start point, uh, which we're going to do in just a second. You can git checkout minus B with a new branch name. Uh, that's the old style way. We don't use that anymore, but it's there so in case you need it, in case you don't, you don't have git switch yet. Or you can use git branch to create a new branch. Now, the first uh, of these, the first two of these, git switch and git checkout, they create the branch and switch you over to that branch at the same time. This third one, get branch, just makes a new branch but doesn't put you on it. And you need to know how to delete a branch, which is get branch minus D, the branch name. You cannot delete a branch that you are on. You have to switch to some other branch first. And to work on a different branch than you're on, you, all you have to do is say, get switch, the other branch name. So if you have a branch called my branch, in fact, let's do that. Let's do a live demo right now where I I've got two files. I've got two commits. I'm going to Git switch minus C, a new branch named my branch. And I'm going to uh, git log minus minus all, minus minus decorate, minus minus one line. And there you can see this head points to my branch, 
but that is also the same commit that main points to. So my branch and main are at the same commit at the moment. And we can look at that graphically. This is a program called GitK. It comes with Git. Is this large enough to see? I don't know if I can make this one bigger. I can make it a little bigger. Is that is that reasonable? You can see that? That's great. So there's our initial commit where we made the file A. And there's the second commit where we made the file B. It is on branches main and my branch. All right. I'm going to quit this. Now, let's go down and look at head. Head now points to my branch because that's the branch I have checked out. But if I look at cat refs heads main, main still points to that, that commit. And cat refs heads my branch still points to the same commit. So both those two branches are at the same point. But if we add a new commit, Get, oops, echo C, something else, D dot text, get head, D dot text, get commit underscore C. Now, you can see I have all three files, A, B, and C. I'm on my branch. You can see that I'm on my branch by looking at my prompt. If I switch back to A, the back to main, get switch main and say ls, then I only have A and B. Switching to a branch always resets you to the state that branch was in when you left it. If I switch back to just like CD, you can pass CD the dash to switch back and forth between the last two directories you were in. You can pass git switch and git checkout uh, the dash to switch back and forth between the last two branches you were on. So now if I do an ls, you can see I have all three files again. And let's take a look at, I'm on my branch. That's what head tells me. And it cat. Cat dot git slash ref slash head slash my branch is now this new commit ID, which you also see in my bash prompt. But our old main at dot git slash ref head main is still the previous commit. And if I do a git log, You can see main is the previous commit, my branch and head, head is what I have checked out, point to the newest one, main points to the one older than that, and I only have three commits total. Let's look at a graphical view of this. This is main, the blue part. And my branch contains all of the commits that are in main. Any commit you can reach from a branch head, that branch contains. So main contains B and initial commit, and my branch contains C and B and initial commit. In fact, you can do branch math using containership like that. I can say, Show me all of the commits that are in, in my branch, but not in main. Everything 
from main to my branch. So nothing that's in main and everything that's in my branch. And this should give us just commit C. And it does. Dot dot means subtract the first one from the second one. And there's a thing called dot dot dot, which I'm not going to talk about, but you may want to look up, which is a symmetric set difference between the two, two branches. All right. Back to the slideshow. Rebasing. Rebasing is moving a set of commits, for instance, a branch, from one starting place to another. And you do that by thinking of the commits as sets of changes. Each commit is a set of changes from the previous commit. That's not how it's stored. A commit is stored as a snapshot. But if you take the difference between two snapshots, the difference is instituted by a given commit, and you apply those changes at a new starting point to make a new commit that looks exactly like the commit you were just copying, but has a different hash, and you do that for an entire branch, that is what rebasing does. It creates a new set of commits that look a lot like the originals, but they have different hashes. And the branch head is moved to the tip of the new set of commits, so the old branch is forgotten. And the branch that you have looks and acts exactly like it moved. So let's take a look at this in a live demo. I am going to switch to a different repo. So here I have two branches. I'm going to say git branch will tell me what branches I have. I have main and my branch, and the little asterisk tells me that I'm on main. Of course, you can tell I'm on main by looking at my bash prompt. You see on main, I have A, B, C, D, E, and I. Um, if I switch to my branch, I have A, F, G, and H. I'll switch back to back to main. And you can see the original files again. I'll do a graphical view. And now you can see a branch that actually looks like a branch. Here's main poking up. The yellow, the yellow commit is the one I have checked out. That's head. And my branch, you see, has F, G, and H on it, just like the files that we talked about before. Initial commit introduced A, and my branch introduces F, G, and H, but main introduces B, C, D, E, and I. So B, C, D, E, and I, like that. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this a nice straight line. This is me working on a feature. My branch is me uh, implementing the user login page. And other people have done work now on main. And I need to get my stuff ready to go in and work with all of their stuff. So I'm going to rebase my branch onto the tip of main. Before we do that, let's take a peek at... And that's not a good way to see it. Um, let's do this. Let's make a tag. Let's check out my branch. Let's tag this as not forgotten. Now let's refresh this view. There's the tag not forgotten. There's our initial commit. Now I'm about to move my branch H, G, and F, F, G, and H up to the tip of main. And I'm going to do that 
by saying git rebase main. Main is the thing I want to rebase on top of. And coincidentally, it's also the thing I want to snip off of. Main is serving two, two roles in this command. Git rebase main means main is the place I want to go. And where I'm connected to main is the place I want to start. I want to snip off of. Wherever those two connect for the last time is where I want to disconnect. And that's that initial commit. So here we go. Now, if I look at uh, what files I have, I'm on my branch, but it's a totally different hash now. You can see that was the hash of my branch a second ago, and this is the hash after the rebase. And now when I look at what files I have, I have all of the files because I have everything that was available on main. And now that um, my branch includes main, I'm about to reload. Let's. How do I make this bigger? Well, you can see there's F, G, and H at the tip of main. So my branch now contains everything that was on main. But because I have a tag here, you can see the old commits still exist. You just can't reach them from a branch. You can't switch to a tag. I mean, maybe you can, but it would be a bad idea. Um, you can check out a tag. That would put you not on a branch, and any commits you made would be lost. Um, but now my branch is, is basically ready to be merged into main. So let's actually go back in time. and use git switch minus create another branch and we're going to start our other branch at d now we're going to examine head and refs and all those things uh, cat dot git slash head shows that we're on another branch and cat dot git slash refs heads another branch shows that we're on six five nine seven that's that's the d commit six nine five seven and you can see six five nine seven in my bash prompt so we are back in time and if I refresh our graphical view. You can see yellow is the is the commit we have checked out. The bold is the branch that we're on. Um, and you can see we're on another branch. Now, what happens if I rebase another branch onto the tip of main? Main already contains another branch. So rebasing another branch onto the tip of main would basically just move this pointer because all these commits are already reachable from main. So let's do that. Git rebase main. And now I'm going to refresh our graphical view. All that happened was my branch head moved. No commits changed, nothing was rewritten, nothing got forgotten. All that happened was I now have two branches that point to the same commit. The interesting thing about that is that we can rebase main itself. We used my rebase to get my branch in a straight line with main, but now if we rebase main to the tip of my branch, that will make all of the commits from my branch available on main. That's the same as merging. 
So let's do that. Get switch over to main. And now I'm going to get rebase onto the tip of my branch. And now, if we look at the graphical view and I reload it, now main includes all of the commits, all of the ones that it used to con contain and all of the ones that my branch had. Main has collected all of the commits together. Your feature has landed. So merging. Merging is the other way to get commits onto a different branch. When we rebased previously, uh, we made all the commits from my branch reachable from main. That means main contains all these changes. Merging is another way to get a given branch to contain all those changes. Merge makes a new commit with two or more parents. Right now, we've only looked at commits with two or more children. Um, now we're going to look at one with two or more parents. And that new commit is the textual union of all the changes from both sides. So let's take a look at, just to remember here, we had one place where a commit has two children. It has the B commit and the F commit as children. Of course, we're going to forget about the F commit. We, we can delete that tag anytime, and those commits will just be invisible to us after that and will eventually be garbage collected. But all these other commits only have one child, and all of them only have one parent. So what we're going to do now is we are going to switch to, I'm going to quit git k, and I'm going to switch to I'm going to do a graphical view of this. You can see this is much the same state that we started it with the other tree, my branch and main. But now I want my features to get on main without me moving this branch anywhere else. I just want main to suddenly contain them all magically. So let's make that happen by checking out main. I'm on my branch right now, but we're going to switch to main. I'm going to say ls. You can see I've only got the main files. Let me switch back. And you can see I only have the my branch files. Only the main files. Now I'm going to say git merge my branch. And that is going to make a brand new commit at the tip of main that has two parents. One of the parent is the main that we have right now, and the other parent is the my branch that we have right now. And that new commit will therefore contain all of the changes that came before it on both sides. So here we go. Since I'm making a new commit, I have to make a commit message. And this one is acceptable to me. That was Vim, by the way. Vim is great. Now I'm going to reload this. And now you can see that the initial commit, here's all the commits that were on main. I have no idea what's going on here. Why is initial commit here twice? That doesn't look right. Oh, it wasn't right. Good. <laughs> and here's where my branch is. And then this is the commit we have checked out. It's the tip of main. And main has two parents, my branch and the old tip of main. And it therefore contains all of those commits, which means it therefore contains all of those files. So if I say ls, we get all the files.
before I move on to collaboration and workflows, I want to talk about the things that happen when you merge or rebase. I haven't gone to the trouble of creating a, a hard case, but the hard case is when there are conflicts between the two sides. In both cases, there's two sides. You're either rebasing one branch onto another, that's two sides, the one branch and the other, or you're merging two branches together, and that's two sides, the one branch and the other. Those branches can have changes to the same underlying file, and that would cause a conflict. When you tried to merge them together, Git wouldn't know which change you wanted. Did you want the one from the left parent or from the right parent? Did you want the one that you're rebasing or the one that was there before? Did you want the one that you're changing or the one that was already changed? So conflicts are the hard thing. When you merge, like this, like you did in this picture, you're only making one changed commit, the new commit that goes onto the tip of main. So there's only one chance for you to resolve conflicts. You only have to do it one time. But when you Rebase, as we did before, you're moving three commits. You're recreating those three commits at a whole different place. And there could be changes anywhere in here that conflict with changes anywhere in here. So you have three opportunities for conflicts. So rebasing is slightly harder than merging. But rebasing makes a nice straight line. And straight lines are useful because repos can get very, very busy. I have here, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got the Git repo. Um, it has all these files. It has a ton of branches. Here they are. And if I do a git k, of this, man, I wish I knew how to grow this window. You can see there's tons of lines. The graph is totally ununderstandable. It's, it's completely opaque. Um, so there's a question about whether you want to keep nice straight lines by rebasing all the time or whether you want to merge to preserve the very essence of history, the exact history that it really was. You really did write that feature slightly before these two commits happened on main. So you want to merge those together instead of rebasing them. So it looks like you wrote the feature first. To some people, that's really, really important. To other people, they just want the straight line. I am one of the people who just wants the straight line. I highly recommend rebasing because it makes your graphs way easier to understand. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll hang on a second. Yeah? Uh, you, you recommend rebasing, but... You also said rebasing is kind of a dick move on branches that somebody else might be using. So if you have a shared branch, I'm about to talk about that. Okay. In collaboration. Uh, right now, I've, I've only shown you branches that are not shared. I haven't pushed any of those branches. Okay. So because they're not pushed, no one else has them. And if I rebase them, Nobody has work that is going to be moved. So you're rebasing locally without having done a push. Exactly. So you, you can do all that you want. And, and then, as you'll probably show us, you can, when you're all done rebasing to end up with what you want, then you can push the whole thing. That's right. Okay. Once your branch is shared, once you've pushed it and other people have checked it out, it's fine for people to just look at it on the server 
especially if you're using some Git um, management tool like GitHub or GitLab, um, both of which are really great. Uh, if they only look at the branch through that and through merge requests, um, it's fine for you to rebase all you want, as long as no one's sharing it with you. But once they've checked it out and put their own commits on it, rebasing it is a huge problem. I would draw a picture of what that problem is, but I have no drawing tools. But you can see pictures of it if you search the internet. It's, uh, it's pretty widespread. Wolf? Yeah? If you were finished with a branch when you merged it into main or master, could you delete the branch to clean up the picture, so to speak? Yes. Now, deleting the branch only deletes that file that has what the branch head is in it. So you won't be getting rid of any commits. If some commits become unreachable because you deleted that branch, then those commits will eventually be garbage collected. Um, if you merge them into main in a straight line, the way we did with the rebase on both sides, when we rebased uh, uh, my branch and then we rebased main onto my branch, so we did two rebases. If you did that and then deleted my branch, you'd still have all those commits in a nice straight line and you wouldn't have my branch anymore and your tree would be clean and life would be good. So deleting a branch doesn't really delete or clean up the commits that have been merged over as a new commit after merge. That is correct. All deleting a branch does is delete that file in .git slash ref slash head. Okay. Then from a user of Git, do I care that those commits are still out there but not reachable? If they're not reachable, they'll be garbage collected in a certain amount of time. Um, it config config slash ninety get expire get ref log expire get the ref log is the only thing that's going to point to those commits uh, they stick around because the ref log is pointing to them. Do you guys know what the ref log is, or, or should I explain that right now? I do not. Okay. The ref log is your absolute best friend. If you're rebasing and merging things around and you've made some kind of mistake, the ref log tells you exactly what's happened. So let me go back to uh, ready to rebase. And uh, you can see I have three branches, my branch, main, and another branch. So if I go into the .git directory, you'll see I have a logs file, a logs directory. If I cd into logs, you'll see a log for head that tells me every place that head has been and a log for every ref I have. So ls refs, ls refs heads. Another branch, main, and my branch. We can look at these files directly, but I'll show you a better way in just a second. So let's take a look at main. Uh, cat refs heads main. This, I'm going to have to make my window wider. This shows from top to bottom, top is the oldest, bottom is the newest, where the tip of main has been. On the initial commit, main is considered to have started from all zeros. This is, this is the all zeros hash. That means nothing, means you, there was nothing. And this is the hash of the very first commit. And this is the active, this is when it happened, right here. That's a, a date timestamp. And that's my time zone. And this is what happened, a commit that was the initial commit. Did I make a commit that had the same name twice? That's terrible. Did I? I'm not sure I did. I'm not sure what this means. 
Oh, maybe I switched around. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, this is one way to look at it. It's not the useful way. Let me show you the useful way. If I say git ref log, that's going to implicitly do ref log head. If I do git ref log main, that's going to show me everything that's happened on main. Eight is the oldest commit here, and zero is the newest commit. If I didn't like that rebase, I can put the tip of main back to where it was before I rebased, which is back here at C12. And I would do that by saying git reset minus minus hard. I'm on main at the moment, as you can see in my in my uh, bash prompt to main at one. This would undo my my re rebase, the rebase that fast forwarded main all the way up to the tip of of my branch. I'm not going to do it. Well, I, I can do it. Let's take a look at. Here's the graphical version. You see main points to my branch. There's another branch. Uh, that's where main pointed just a second ago. I'm going to do this reset. Now I'm going to reload this graphical page. And now you see main is back where it was before I did the did the uh, rebase. So the ref log is a tool to fix your mistakes. Nothing that you've done can't be fixed. Commits exist. No action in Git destroys a commit other than garbage collection. Um, and garbage you, collection happens rarely. You, okay, you, you, either you explicitly make it happen or it happens after 90 days worth of stuff. Commits are kept for a long time. So if you've messed something up, you've ruined something, your commit that was perfect before you did that ruining thing is still there, and you can make your branch point back to it by using the ref log to tell you where to go. Can, can you do another get, uh, ref log? Do a get ref log. And... Let's do a get ref log on my branch. Well, where did you do the uh, reset a minute ago? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I want to see the result of the of the uh, reset that you did. I want to see how that looks in the ref log. So okay, everything has moved down one. Yeah, the rebase that made it be the final state uh, is now instead of being at zero is now at one. Right. The original place where main was after I had made all the main commits is now main at two. And I'm at the same place as main at two, C129, C129. Ah, uh, yeah. So if you if you realize that that git reset was the wrong thing to do, you could undo it right now just by doing another reset That's right. at one. Yeah. So you just bounced back to where you were before you started these resets. That's right. And let me refresh my graphical view. And there you can see main is back to the tip where we wanted it. Yeah. All right. Evan asked a question in chat. Uh, if you're operating off some origin remote, do you have to push your reset double dash hard? Um, OK. So here's the thing. <laughs> if you reset, if you had already pushed your branch and then you reset it backwards in time, that would be a bad thing. That's just like rebasing. That makes the branch be changed underneath anybody else who would have put commits onto it. So if that branch was shared and you had already pushed it and then you reset it back in time, um, you, if you wanted that to go to the server, yes, you would have to git push minus minus force. But you wouldn't want to do that because that would ruin other people. That would make their lives hard. 
So the answer to your question is yes, and don't do that. So if you it, could you do the two resets that we just did without pushing between and you'd be okay, or should you not do that? I don't know why you would want to do that, but yes, you could do that. Well, let's say I did a reset not realizing it was on main. Yes. Right? It's like, oh, crap, I did it while I was on main. I didn't mean to do that. So yes. you can do a reset to put things back, and, and then you're back okay again. Yep, that's exactly what you could do. Okay, because that's the kind of thing I do. And that is what, is what the ref log is for. It's to save you when you make yeah. a mistake. Yeah. Okay. So you don't push between them. As long as you don't push. Now, usually, um, Git will help you uh, by s refusing to push um, if you've made some mistake by changing history and making it be that the that the commits you're pushing no longer contain the previously pushed state. Yeah. Git will say, oh, no, you can't push. And then you'll say, oh, yes, I can. I'll just force. No. Do not force push. I have two rules, just two rules. <laughs> One rule is you're, you're not ready to push. <laughs> you are really not ready to push. You always think you're ready to push, but you are not. <laughs> you should definitely hang on to those commits for just a while to see if you had some misspellings or you needed them to be rearranged, or you needed them to be squashed, don't push. Just wait. Just wait a little while to make sure that you've got everything that you want. Don't commit and push as one step. These, these are mistakes. So don't push. And the second thing is, don't force push. Never force push. I actually have exceptions to that rule. Um, when you are working with, say, GitLab and merge requests, and you are sharing your branch only for other people to code review, then when you rebase that branch to make it easy for them to merge by pushing the big green button, that's how they merge, by pushing a big green button. They don't use git commands to do it. They just push a big green button. Um, then rebase is good, and therefore you have to force push your branch to make it go up. So yes, there are times that you want to force push, and I guess there's times when you want to push, even though you you don't realize you're not ready. But if you just keep in mind that you're not ready to push, you're going to see all the times that you weren't ready to push. I promise you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Let's talk a little bit about collaboration and workflows. Um, there's lots of different ways to work with Git. Um, it is a tool designed for infinite undo and collaboration and mixing those two things together in any uh, ratio that you like. So uh, one way that you can work is just all by yourself, entirely on your primary branch with no other branches. Um, entirely local, never never pushing to any uh, upstream repository. Or you could de develop several different features at once and maybe fix bugs. So you use different branches and switch between them, but they're all local branches. You don't push any of them. Or you're a small team and you work remotely and you have a central repo and everybody pushes to and pulls from that repo. And so they're all Here's the thing to know about um, everybody working on main. If you put five commits on main locally on your, on your machine, and I put five commits on my main locally on my machine, then it's like we have the same root tree, the same common part, everything up to where it's pushed to the server. And then we have two branches, your main and my main. Um, and those two branches are different. So when somebody pushes to, to the server, even if we both try to push at the same time, one person is going to win. One person is going to get their, their main pushed first. And the other one is going to have their push denied because suddenly 
their work doesn't contain the work that's pushed to the server. So they would have to force push, which you don't want to do because that would throw away all the work of the other person who just pushed. So you have to pull their work and either merge your work into it or rebase your work on top of it. And this is what pull minus minus rebase means. When you pull minus minus rebase, you are saying, bring down all those new commits and as part of that, rebase all of my commits from main at the same time to the tip of that. So that's what you do usually right before you're about to push is you pull minus minus rebase to get everything that's up there and get your stuff moved to the tip of it so that you're ready to push. Does that make sense? I'm going to take your silence as a yes. Uh, well, yeah. I was muted, so you didn't hear me. Um, <laughs> you're saying to a git pull minus minus rebase to pull down the latest from main mm -hmm. and, and put your stuff uh, on top of that. That's in, right. In preparation for you to do a push. That's right. Right. Can okay. I add one what I do? <laughs> what, what I do is I do a git pull. And that merges the stuff in main into my into my local repo. And then I do a, a git push to push all my stuff up. So you're doing a git pull without minus minus rebase. Yes. So you are getting merge bubbles. OK, yeah, yeah. When I do that git pull, I do. It, it does ask me to create a commit message. For the merge commit. Yes. So you are getting all of those lines that I showed you in the in the Git repo. Okay. The, the uh, all the vertical lines. All the vertical the, lines. Uh, now the, maybe uh, that's not that bad camp. for you if you're in say a two person team. That's exactly what I am. So but if I if I did a Git pull dash dash rebase, I wouldn't be actually doing a uh, I wouldn't be creating a merge commit. I would just be more or less merging that stuff into my stuff and then and then we might get pushed it pushes it up and there's no there's no merge bubble like you called it exactly it would be a straight line okay and that's why i tell everybody to set their um get config full dot rebase uh, so this is a new setting that you won't have if you have an old git, but you would say git config hold.rebase true. And that would make it automatically happen. I've got you wouldn't have to say pull minus minus rebase. Your polls would all be rebase. Okay. And that is a good thing to do if you want the straight line, which I do. If you care about history being exactly the way it was how you wrote it if it was if you want it to be that yeah we both wrote these things at the same time so i have the commits next to each other instead of along a line uh, right. and i made a bubble if you want the bubble then don't do this uh okay i, I don't care much one way or the other but i i do like cleaner uh, it's cleaner if you set replace clean yes yes I can see that now. Yeah. Okay. So, I do have uh, one quick thing. One quick sure. thing, which yeah. is yeah. git fetch is your friend if you ever pull yourself into this type of thing, because that way you'll uh, at least know what's going on in all the repos before you start doing the pull. <laughs> sure. I I do I do git fetch and then I do a git log uh, master dot dot dev because that's my two branches. And that way I can see the difference between uh, what I have and what I pulled down from uh, from the repo. Right. Uh, and Here. then I can look at those individual commits that somebody else did. Here, and then you have a choice of merging or rebasing. Yes. Right. Harold, we've interrupted you several times. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> I, I am anxious to answer questions because I think questions is the way we're going to make this talk address the needs of the of the audience i appreciate that so let me go back to uh workflows um so before we go on uh 
does a rebase cause a merge if if the two branches have changes to the same file? It causes a conflict. Causes so, a so conflict. it's like a merge without the merge. Command. You want me to try to make a conflict right now? Sure. All right. So first let me go back to this place. So main and another branch. So we make an F file here. I'm going to go to my branch and change F to have some contents. And then I'm going to go to another branch and change F to have some contents that are different. Sure. So let's go do that. So first we'll go to my branch. There's F. By the way, this plus that's showing up here on the side, that's Git gutter. That's a, a Vim plugin. And I also use Fugitive, which is a, a Vim plugin, to let me do all the Git stuff I want inside Vim. I'm not going to do that right now. but. I could if I wanted to. All right. So now the status is that I've modified F. If I say git diff, you can see I added this line. I will now stage this file. Now the git status is I have changes ready to be committed. And if I say git diff, there's no changes. If I say git diff, Minus minus staged, I'll see the stuff that I have staged for commit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I will get commit minus M. Uh, set up for a conflict. There we go. Now I will get switch to another branch. There is no F file. So I'm going to I've got a conflict there for sure. Git status, I have an untracked file, git add f.txt, git status. Now it's ready to be committed. Mm -hmm. Diff should show nothing. Git diff minus minus staged should show the whole file. Git commit minus m other side of the conflict. All right, so now let's take a look at where we are. I've got a commit there checked out on another branch, and I've got my branch ready for a conflict. And now I'm going to, do you want me to merge or rebase? How do you want me to do it? You, you pick. I'll get the conflict either way. I, I think we're interested in the rebase. I, I've seen, I've seen plenty of com, of uh, conflicts doing merges. All right, I'm going to rebase my branch on top of another branch. Okay. All right. Here we go. Get, switch to my branch. Get rebase onto the tip of another branch okay so there's a conflict in f dot text okay and it wants me to see which ones are are uh 
uh, wrong, fix them, and then add them. So if I say get status, you can see here's where it was in my rebase. Here's the problem. Both of us added f.txt and they have different content contents. And so now if I vim f.txt, you can see here's what this is this is I haven't yet gotten to the one where the file is conflicting. This is a conflict. Remember I told you rebase can give you more than one conflict. I'm going to have a conflict where I added F, and I'm going to have a conflict where I added contents to F. So this first one, we both added F. This one on the one side uh, is the second thing I, I wrote. And this is what's on the first side, just the regular F. So what I want is I want just the F. Oops. Hope this works. I hope that doesn't make it be that there's no further conflicts. All right, so now I'm get rebase minus minus continue. This is the commit message for the file I just added. The file, the, this is what I'm putting instead of the commit message that um, would have come normally. Okay. Up oh, and my rebase finished with no further conflicts because resolving that first conflict re resolved the second conflict. And it allowed me to just have the contents of the second one. So if I look at f.txt now, It has the stuff that came in from the first side because I deleted the stuff from the second side. Uh -huh. And now let's take a look at the So you can see the change that I made in this rebased commit. This is F prime really. This is an F. It's it's a new version of F. It's a new version of F where I deleted the contents there that I had made here. Another branch added that line. And then my rebased version of F deleted that line. And then when I put more stuff on that line, it didn't conflict anymore because I had deleted it here. Uh -huh. Did that answer your question? Well, it wasn't my question initially, but it made it a little more clear for me. Okay. Yeah, I think it helps. Uh, my background is, is probably 20 years of clear case. So terminology and uh, some of the actions are different. And certainly what you just showed in clear case, we would have had uh, F is going to be two different elements. And so you would have had a directory conflict, not a file content conflict because they they're different f's they just happen to have the same name um, I see. yeah in git git is not a file tracker git is a content tracker yeah it it's 20 years is hard to unwind <laughs> i hear you i hear you all right so let's talk a little bit more about other workflows one of them is using main as your stable branch, your release branch, and separately maintaining a develop branch or a dev branch or a call it what you will, where your ongoing work is merged, but you still have feature and bug fix branches coming and going, and that's what you keep merging into your develop branch. Every time your develop branch is stable and you like what it is, then you merge that into main. Or you take things off of the develop branch by cherry picking them. Um, Exactly. However you want to do it. This is a, a workflow that works pretty well for a lot of people. I think this is close to what you use, Jim. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's, that's also very common in clear case. Yeah. 
I shouldn't say, yeah, like I know, because I don't know. <laughs> um, finally, uh, big teams with external contributors and merge requests. Merge requests mean that people um, fork your repo, make a branch in their fork of your repo. Fork means they, fork means, so clone, you probably already know, means you get a local copy of a central repo. Fork means you make your own central repo that's a clone of the original central repo, and then you clone your fork locally, you make a branch that has some special name, like I'm gonna fix this bug of yours. You fix the bug and you push that branch up to your public fork. And then you send a merge request to the first repo saying, hey, I have a branch, I fixed this bug of yours. I'm, I'm offering it to you, would you like to incorporate it into your work? And they have a big green button that lets them automatically pull that branch into their repo, examine it, and possibly merge it. So this is when you use GitHub or GitLab. Um, it's a big deal, and it's a way big teams work together these days. And finally, there's the way Git itself works. If you say um, Git help workflows, it will give you a whole uh, man page on how they do it. And it's pretty complicated the way they do it, but it's worth knowing. They talk about several different ways to work, including sending patches by mail and various other things. So get help workflows is your, is your key there. Why, why would you fork instead of just cloning from the original? Because you want to give them a public view of your work. And if you just clone down to your local machine, they can't see your clone. So you fork that way. So let's say the project is Git itself. It's up on GitHub. And you fork that. So now you've got, instead of Git slash Git, you have uh, wolf slash Git. And you make a branch wolf slash git and the branch is named fixing uh, master to be named main or something like that. Uh, and then you make the fix and you push it up to your, I mean, you had to make that fix locally. So you push that branch back up to your public fork and then they can see your public fork, pull that branch into their original central repo, look at it, decide if it should be merged and do the merge. How is that different from creating a branch on their repo and pushing it up so that they could see it? They might not give you permission to to commit to their repo. Ah, thank you. And how, how do you do a Git fork? I, There's I a button on it. GitHub or GitLab. Oh, okay, so this is a feature of the. It's GitHub a feature of the Git environment. Okay. It is not a feature of Git. And Git doesn't yeah. know anything about it. Yeah, I, I tried to get a man page on it, and there isn't one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. And finally, I have one slide left, which is some resources. And I'm going to show you one of them. Uh, a couple from the Pro Git book, which is free up on gitsem.com. Um, I've got a link to Fugitive. I'm going to turn this into a PDF and make it available to you guys. I'll give it to Jim and he'll post it. Um, and TIG. TIG is a repository viewer. Let me just launch TIG here. The TIG shows me the various commits, where the heads are, what happened in the change. Um, Very handy. Yeah, TIG's super handy and super lightweight. I can do that on a remote 
machine. Yes, you can. Yeah. Uh, and let me show you. I wonder what editor I have to use to do this. What browser I have to use to do this. Can you guys see this? Yes. It's empty. But... Learn, get branching. So this mm. is a tutorial on branching that uses diagrams to um, show you exactly how branching works and what commands to use. Um, it is very graphical. The only I only have one complaint about this. I think everybody should use this site. Everybody should go through this tutorial because it's great. It will reinforce all the points that I talked about uh, and more. Um, it's really useful. It's really clear. It's really clean. I have one complaint, and that complaint is all the trees are drawn upside down, and I hate <laughs> that. It is very annoying to me. C1 should be at the top here. That is that is my complaint. So learngetbranching.js.org is the last thing. All right. More questions? Questions about how to make more branches, different ways of switching between them, um, deleting remote branches, pushing branches, anything? Uh, with you, I've, I've talked about this before with you about you're creating branches to do bug fixes and feature, you know, add new features and stuff. So you're you're creating a branch, doing all your work. When you're happy with your work, you either rebase it or merge it back into main. And then you delete that branch. Yeah, and Git even has a nice little thing about that, which is that when you're done, you delete your branch. Mm -hmm. And the way you delete a branch is you say git branch minus b, the branch name, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And if the branch is not fully merged into the branch, you do this when you're on main. Okay. So git switch main, git branch minus b, other branch. There's no other branch in this repo, so not, nothing's going to happen. But um, normally it would say other branch not fully merged to main, um, use minus capital D if you really want to do the delete. So, so you use minus, you work, minus lowercase d to start, and right. it, if it if it deletes, then everything's merged and you're good. You use minus capital D if um, if well, you meant not to merge it. Yeah, like you worked on a new feature and then you decided oh. it was crap, and you just right. wanted to blow it away. <clears throat> so you don't have to merge that branch in; you can just throw it away. Exactly, and that is another beauty of branches. Yes. So it's so quick to make a branch. Just yeah. uh, get switch minus create bug four nine five two one. Um, as storyline reports, and now I'm on that. That branch. Let me bring this over and reload. See where I am? I've got that one checked out. That was mm -hmm. also where main is because I was on main when I made the branch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want any of this other stuff. And I make some commit.
Now I will refresh my graphical view. There's my fix. Now all I have to do is put that where I want it. Do I want it to be on main? I can rebase main to point to the tip of that. Or do I want it to be at the tip of my branch? Um, let's put it at the tip of my branch. Get rebase my branch. So now if I reload, it's one further than my branch. So now I can either merge it into my branch, which will be a fast forward. My branch will just move its head pointer. It won't have to do any text merging. Or I could rebase my branch to point to the tip of it. That's exactly the same thing as a merge in that case. Either one of those will make my branch point, or I could do a reset even if I wanted to, but that's kind of low level. Um, to make my branch point to the same place, let's let's use rebase. Hit switch my branch. Get rebase. Uh, and this is the nice thing about when you've got the get bash prompt and all that stuff installed. You'll have um, auto auto complete installed for Git as well, and it will auto complete branch names and whatnot. Super useful, but let you, lets you make branch names as long as you want. So now I'll refresh my view. They both point to the same place. My fix is in. I'm all done. Get branch minus D branch deleted. And I'll refresh my view. All done, and that was easy. Yeah. That was totally trivial to do. Branches are easy to use. They're super super useful. As you saw when I switched back and forth between two branches that were at two different places, how all the files and all the changes that were in one uh, went away and you got back to the state you were in at the other one and vice versa. They're, they're super perfect for that. They're exactly what you need. Uh, could you show us um, how to do a rebase with a dash I where you can merge a bunch of commits together or rearrange the commits? Absolutely. Uh, I think that'd be interesting. So here we've got my branch and it comes off of another branch. And let's say I don't like the order of F, G, H and, and set up for conflict and J fixes storyline. I don't like the order of those. And I also want to merge some of them together. So I want to do a rebase minus I interactive, minus minus interactive of my branch, snipping it off of another branch. So get rebase minus I another branch. So here you see in reverse order, the oldest first, um, F, G, F, G, H, set up for conflict, mm -hmm. H, set up for conflict, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's graphical tools that will let you do this in a different way. I'm going to do it using Vim. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make G come first. I'm going to combine. Uh, H and set up for conflict. And I'm going to edit uh, fixed storyline reports. Now, when I write this file and quit, it's going to. Um, okay. When I write this file and quit, it's going to execute them as though it were a program. It's going to pick G, pick F, pick H, squash set up for conflict into H. So it's going to make me edit the, the commit messages. It's going to have both of the commit messages there. And then it's going to uh, 
set up J and let me edit that. So here we go. So this is when I got to the place where I'm combining H and setup for conflict. This was this the edit the, command. That command, right. that's yeah. right. And this is the commit message for H. And this is the commit message for setup for conflict. I'm going to keep both of them. All right, and now we stopped at J fixes storyline reports. So I can get show plus J, J fixes storyline reports. I want to get commit minus minus amend that and fix the fix the message. And so now I say get L8. It's now instead of now I haven't refreshed my old one. So you can see FGH set up for conflicts, J fix the storyline. But I have fixed the one here. So now you see G comes G. first, yeah. then F, then H set up for conflict is one thing. And I've edited uh, the message for J. Yeah, with the or Complete not. Or not. Let me refresh this graphical view. And there it all is. So that is rebase minus I. That is one of the most powerful tools in the Git toolbox, and I use it all the time. Why do I use it all the time? I use it all the time because it lets you, I think your commits should tell a story. They should tell the story of how something works. Each commit should implement exactly one reasonable chunk. Your program should always run. No matter what commit you have checked out, your program should always run. It shouldn't be that you need two commits together. And if you don't have both of those commits, it won't run. If, if that's the case, those two commits should be squashed into one commit. If, if you need another commit to happen first, that commit should be first. Um, so I use rebase minus I to reorder my commits, to make them tell the story of the implementation of the feature the way it should be written. And that is why I'm a fan of rewriting history and I don't care for merges. Did that answer your question? Yes, that's, uh, that's, that's like you said, very powerful and pretty neat. I've done it a few times and I think I'll do it more. There's lots of ways to squash. If I wanted to squash all four of those commits that there are now, I could just do a uh, reset minus minus soft down to another branch and then make a brand new commit that included all of those changes. That's one way to do it. Or I could rebase minus I and squash, squash, squash mm -hmm. all of the all of the commit except the first one. You don't you don't squash G, you squash F, H, and J. Okay, so when you do a when you do a reset soft it removes the commits but leaves the changes there in your local repo that's right it moves the head pointer back down but leaves the changes okay, okay. So, so then you can do it then you can do a, uh, an add of all those changes and do one commit and that would that would be just one big commit for all those changes. right and i think you can do mix and it will keep them in the index let's see what happens if i say nothing git reset i'm on oh i gotta get Rebase minus minus continue to finish the rebase. Um, get get reset. I'm on my branch. I want to reset to another branch. I've got untracked files. Now, what if this was a mistake? Resetting was a mistake. What should I do? I should use the ref log. Yeah. And I would see that right before my reset, I was here at my branch 
at one. Get the set minus minus hard my branch at one. Now let's get reset minus minus soft another branch. Now see the see this plus mark here? Mm -hmm. That plus mark means I have changes added to the commit. Star means this star that I have right here means I have changes that are not staged for commit, but they are in tracked files. And this percent okay. sign means I have new files that are not yet tracked. Sure. So get status will show you what's going on. That's right. If I do a git status, you can see I've added three new files and I've modified F. Yeah. And yeah. I can say git commit minus M squashed a whole bunch of commits. Uh -huh. Now, if I look in the graphical view and reload, there you can see it. Yeah. So that's an easy way to squash, but it's kind of low level. It's not necessarily the best way. Okay. But it sure is easy. Very neat. Other questions? Let me reinforce what I said before. Everybody should go do learngitbranching.js.org. It is a great resource. It will challenge you, it will teach you, and it will entertain you. It is delightful. And I guess that's all I have. That's a lot.